which the only law that is absolute in Lost is, whatever happened, happened. And, as we see in the show, the entirety of events that happen between seasons 1 to 5 are predicated on a causal time loop that must be fulfilled, and this is what is meant by, destiny, and, fate within the lexicon of the show. You cannot change the past any more than you can prevent the future, at least up until the year 2007. The outcomes of your life and choices are predetermined and part of a large tapestry weaved across time. The reason for all the time travel is directly related to the source, the prime mover, which is the eternal battery that powers our existence. This light beneath the island is the source of time itself and a piece of its light exists within every human being and when our time is up, the light within us returns to the source for rebirth, aka the flash sideways. There are two types of time travel in Lost. The first is physical travel, in which people physically move through time. The second is mind travel, in which consciousness moves through time. Let's start with physical travel. When Benjamin Linus pushes the frozen donkey wheel in 2004 it begins a causal time loop that consists of various events taking place in the past, caused by time travelers from the present, who in turn end up shaping the events of the future. This endless loop must take place or else the world will end. The compass that Richard gives to time-traveling Locke in 2007 that Locke then gives back to Richard in the 1950s is a perfect symbol for this causal loop. The compass has no origin point, it just goes around and around this loop, forever. Other examples of the loop include. Young Ben is shot by Syed in 1977. The boy grows up to become the leader of the others and goes on to manipulate Syed into becoming an assassin for him. Kate and Sawyer help to save young Ben in 1977 by giving him to Richard, which is how Ben loses his innocence and becomes an other. As an adult, Ben will later kidnap Kate and Sawyer in 2004 and put them in cages. This leads to the couple's romance and partnership. Jack carries out Daniel Faraday's Jughead plan and drops the nuke into the dig site, which ultimately ensures the hatch will be built. This leads to the crashing of his plane, 30 years later. Juliet was always pulled into the hole and detonated the bomb, which negates the buildup of leaking energy and stops the world from ending in 1977. However, the fallout from the electromagnetism is what ultimately causes the pregnancy issue on the island. This is what ultimately brings Juliet to the island in 2001 in the first place. It's a causal time loop and many of the characters are, in karmic ways, the causes of their own suffering. Let's look at events from the the linear point of view of the island. At some point during or post the Egyptian period, time travelers from the future suddenly appear by what will become the Orchid Station site. They have come from 2000 years in the future. And, as we know, this event cannot be unwritten because whatever happened, happened. So, the island, aka the source, has to ensure that time flows towards creating a future where these people will come back to this moment in time to create a foundational causal event. When John Locke climbs down into the well just as a time flash occurs, Sawyer holds onto the rope from above. He takes the rope through the time flash with him. The group find themselves in the ancient past with the rope now stuck in the ground. This is what will prompt ancient island inhabitants to dig there in the first place, to find out where the rope leads, thereby creating the existence of the first well. This well will become significant to Dharma and our losties many centuries later. This is the same place that the man in black will later instruct and influence the Egyptian inhabitants to build a donkey wheel chamber, which in turn becomes the catalyst to begin the time loop in 2004 when Benjamin Linus turns that very same wheel. So much is predicated on this one time jump that we see take place in season 5 episode, This Place is Death. The source begins constructing the road to the time loop from this point forward to make sure this group of people come back to this point in time no matter what in order to begin the causal chain of events. Our time travelers also appear in various other places in history too, in a non-linear order, creating causal ripple effects through their actions and interactions. Jacob understands what is happening because the source flows through him and he therefore knows things as a result, sensing the future, when to wait, when to act, and what needs to be done. It is how he knew to instruct the others to build the runway on Hydra Island in 2004 because it will be used in 2007 for Ajira 316 to return. A protector knows what needs to be done. Just as when Jack became the protector he just knew that uncorking the source would allow him to kill the man in black. The source speaks and acts through the protector. They become an emissary of the light. The island guides all things to ensure that the world continues to turn. 
Even the man in black's plot to kill Jacob is all part of this cycle, a necessary part of keeping destiny on schedule. Let's move on to the second type of time travel in Lost. Mind travel. Human consciousness traveling through time is mainly demonstrated through the character of Desmond Hume, and it is here that the time travel becomes more complex. However, the law remains the same. Whatever happened, happened. It is all in service of causality. Desmond has been guided by both Charles Widmore and Eloise Hawking in his life, both of whom were aware of the importance of Desmond needing to go to the island because of Daniel Faraday's journal entry. The source too has intervened directly in Desmond's life to ensure the future unfolds as needed. Desmond turning the fail-safe key is what made it possible for him to have flashes of the future because of his intense electromagnetic exposure to the source's energy pocket. And those flashes were the source's way of guiding Desmond along a very certain path and towards specific outcomes. The flashes start the way they do to help Desmond understand how to navigate the visions and to shape events towards the start of the time loop i.e. getting Ben to push the wheel in 2004. Let's run through the visions. Desmond sees a flash of John Locke giving a speech and tells Hurley. Hurley tells Charlie that he thinks Desmond can see the future. Charlie then witnesses Desmond make some eerie predictions with lightning. Then drowning. This causes Charlie to interrogate Desmond. This is how Charlie discovers his own destiny is to die. This revelation and several other brushes with near-death predictions prepares Charlie mentally and emotionally to sacrifice himself for the island. Desmond's visions lead him to find, and save, Naomi. Her survival leads to a plan to contact the freighter. Desmond's visions lead him to tell Charlie what he needs to do down in the Looking Glass station. And so Charlie is finally ready to give up his life. He swims down to the Looking Glass and unjams the signal. A mission only he could have accomplished since the passcode was programmed by a musician. This moment was fated to take place. It is why Charlie could not have died at any other point in the timeline. All of this leads to the freighter's arrival and a justifiable reason for Ben to turn that wheel, which begins the time loop. If Desmond had not received these flashes of Charlie's death and intervened then the causal chain of events would not have led to finding Naomi, or the looking glass, or unjamming the signal, or the freighter's arrival, and there would be no motivation to turn the wheel at all. Ergo, no time loop, and that would have created a cataclysmic paradox. Because our losties would not travel back in time to prevent the incident from destroying the world in 1977. And this is why the flashes for Desmond stop after Charlie's death because the source has achieved what it needed to through him. When Desmond finally leaves the island and crosses the source's time dilation barrier, the electromagnetic exposure he absorbed in the swan, which sent his consciousness back to the past the first time in flashes before your eyes, scrambles his mind. It is technically 1996 Desmond in the past who is having flashes of his own future on the freighter rather than the Desmond of our present going back to the past question that often comes up is whether or not Desmond can change the past. When Faraday tells him that he is uniquely special, and that the rules don't apply to him, he means that Desmond is resistant to electromagnetism, which becomes important in the end, and that he is uniquely placed within the timeline to remember things in a non-linear capacity. Because Desmond's consciousness is unstuck in time, he can move between different points in his life, back and forth. Learning information he could never have otherwise known that feeds into the causal chain. Faraday knows that because Desmond's consciousness can travel through time, he could theoretically use Desmond in the past to send messages to the future. When Faraday knocks on the swan door in the past and Desmond comes out with the gun to confront him, this is something that always happened. Des always came out to find Daniel Faraday rambling about finding Eloise Hawking but, as the time flash hits and Faraday vanishes, Desmond's consciousness from this interaction immediately travels forward in time to the future and occurs to present-day Desmond as simply a memory. Meanwhile, the Desmond in the past will not recall this meeting with Faraday for another several years. The timeline is not changed, only Desmond's perceptions and memory. So, is there such a thing as free will in Lost, or is everything predetermined? The show asks this question throughout its run and wants us to ask this question. But it does eventually give us an answer. The answer is that free will is only a matter of perception. No character ever had a choice in coming to the island, or traveling back in time, because everything happening in their lives is a result of the source course correcting people's paths to avert the end of the world, or a time paradox. 
Everybody in the series was in some way involved in this causal time loop, i.e. either they were candidates like Jack and Locke who were directly instrumental in the history and ultimate fate of the island, or they were tangentially part of the general chain of events that led to certain outcomes. Everyone on the oceanic plain, and everyone who ever set foot upon that island, are all part of the island's grand tapestry of time. You can't have effect without cause, and much of the cause has already taken place in the past and cannot be unchanged. Example, when the others from 1954 kill off the remaining oceanic survivors on the beach with flaming arrows it means that those nameless background survivors had to be on the plane in 2004 in order to go back in time and die. Daniel Faraday's tragic arc is the best example of being a cog in a larger machine. Faraday doesn't get to be the hero of the story or have any grand destiny beyond being murdered by his own mother, but he does plant the extremely important idea in Jack's mind about detonating Jughead. And Jack executes that plan after Daniel dies, then Juliet completes it. Some people have a grand destiny to fulfill. Jack gets to save the world. While other people, like Charlie for instance, are simply destined to die in order to move the chain of events forward. These are sacrifices that the island demands in order to maintain the timeline and its own existence, survival, and the survival of the entire world. Everyone plays both big and small parts in this grand design. Even the most anonymous background survivor had a part to play, and people like us in the normal world beyond the island's boundaries. Every person, every moment, every minor or major decision. It all creates the next moment in an ongoing chain. This is the nature of causality. Therefore, everyone was important in some way, regardless of whether or not they were candidates. If the argument is between free will versus determinism then lost clearly comes down on the side of determinism, some events are simply meant to happen no matter how hard we fight against them. Free will exists from a character's perspective and their linear perception of time as they travel through their life and make choices for themselves. But the god in the machine, aka the source, aka the island, remains the prime mover in this tapestry of time being weaved together. If you step off the path, it will make sure to reroute you back to the path another way. This is what Eloise Hawking means by course correction. Because we all have a destination, and a destiny. Thank you for watching. Future videos will be forthcoming on other mysteries in the show. Until then, stay lost.